welcome. I'm Aaron Jack to this week's episode of the Aaron Jack Show with Doing Good HQ. And today we're going to have Pilar Cote on. So thank you so much for joining. And Pilar is going to be on here in a second. I'm so excited. Searchlight and DJing and just amazing things in the Web3 space. So welcome. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. That's wonderful. You know. (laughs) What time? I got one more thing in my bag. (laughs) Oh my god! Wait, wait. What time? What time is it where you are right now? Oh, it's uh, it's like four p.m. Okay, so you're in Mm -hmm. Berlin, right? Berlin, Berlin. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. in Detroit. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm This is one hour before East Coast, right? And we have this daylight savings time that I heard they just voted to like not do any more daylight savings anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just passed, I think, in like the House or the Senate. One or the other. It passed in one. Oh, (laughs) Like unanimously. (laughs) Unanimously. I love it. People are like, we're over this. We're done. We're done with the like back and forth. I don't know where I am. <laughs> what time right? of day is it? Yeah. Right. So, so we're, we're doing all these NFTs and yes. what, what is the NFTs? What are these NFTs in the future to you? Like, what does it look like? And where do you see people gathering around it with the NFTs in the future? Um, I think I think NFT. So right now, um, NFT like NFT culture, the Web three like NFT ecosystem. I want to say one of the last I think uh, statistics that I heard was that less than four percent, or about four percent, of everybody on the internet, like anybody and everybody that's on the internet, is even in this space right now, right? Like they they know about it or in it, you know, you know they're building something in it or what, what have you, or, or dabbling in, in art and, and looking at new ways to, um, you know, promote their work or build their careers, like new avenues, right, as, as creators um, or creatives in, in, in whatever industry. So it's, when you think of that proportion, like it's, it's very small, right? And as people learn about it and onboard, I see it as something where, um, you know, this is a new economy, right? This is a new economy, right? It's a new creator economy. Um, And we're looking at now creativity itself and art um, in a whole new way, right? So it has a new kind of value um, and and art itself has value. Creativity has value, right? Um, And as the crux of, you know, the basis of innovation that, that speaks, it says a lot. But I think for the future, we're going to be seeing NFTs and, and, you know, whether they're collections or um, just standalone pieces and the innovation that's built around NFTs, we're going to see these being used because we're seeing it now. We're seeing the beginnings of that now. We're going to see these used as ways to build community, right? Um, whether that is, say you're a recording artist, right? They're, you're going to be, see, we're going to see artists utilizing NFTs to build and and connect directly with their fans, to, like directly engage with these communities and um, anybody that's that's tapped into that NFT collection that they've created. You now have a direct line to those people, and they have a direct line to that artist forever, right? As as like the blockchain is forever, as far as I understand it, right? Um, Web3, it's forever. Do you know what I mean? So like, like that's going to happen. You're going to see, we're going to see more brands coming in, being able to like directly connect to their communities, you know, build out communities. We're going to see artists um, like we're seeing right now. Um, so you used to have like the gatekeepers and you do in, in the analog art world, the fine art world, you've got the gatekeepers, you know, if they don't want you in, you're not getting in, it's not happening. Those doors are closed, right? Especially if you are a woman or a person of color 
those doors are pretty, pretty shut to you. Do you know what I mean? Um, less than 5% of all the artworks held in cultural institutions around the planet, whether you're a museum, a gallery, whatever, have works of art made by women. Not because women don't create art, but because it's not valued. So now in this new creative economy, regardless of your skin color, regardless of your gender, or the way you identify, you now have a direct line to building a community around your creativity, right? To, to a direct line to collectors um, on a global level. So let's say you did happen to be an artist that gets picked up by a gallery, let's say, like in the analog world. Um, your ecosystem is defined by that gallery's ecosystem, their reach, right? Like their, their gallery, like their um, collector affiliations, you're limited to that. Within this space, within, you know, utilizing NFTs for art, you know, art, art like NFT art, um, your collector base is now global. It's, it's just instantly like anywhere in the world. Like, you know, somebody in Russia can buy your work. Somebody in Afghanistan can buy your work. And I'm using those because it's, it's, they're really far-fetched places. Do you know what I mean? Right now in this, right now, in, right now, in this moment in time, in this moment in history, right? Like these are far-fetched places, um, you know, but someone in, in LA can buy your work, someone in New York, it's not like based on, you know, well, the gallery I'm in is in Atlanta. Do you know what I mean? And so only the people that are physically affiliate, do you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it's very, very open. It's very, very open. And I just see, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people utilizing um, this, you know, the blockchain Web three to build a, a different kind of community base and be able to connect and deliver um, and and interact in very very different ways, um, you know, um, forever and 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 for in in all kinds of different activations in all kinds of you know whether you're you're fundraising you're a nonprofit and you want to fundraise. You know, this, these types of collections and these types of use cases, you know, now you have a different kind of model, right? And, um, you know, directly tapping into that um, for fundraising purposes is, is pretty exciting. Wow. It's really what exciting. Have you, what have you seen work so far? And what do you see from those models working into the future in terms of artists, DJs, fundraising, nonprofits? Like, what are some of... Like, I'm sure there's some overlaps that you've seen, but also like some differentiations between those different groups of people uh, right. utilizing NFTs. Right. So we are seeing people utilizing NFT art uh, and NFTs for impact, right? Whether that's like social impact, conservation impact, all kinds of different ways that they're impacting, even within you know, the war that's happening right now that's kind of in our faces, um, you know, between like Russia, Ukraine, like that sort of thing. We're seeing people looking at ways to um, utilize, you know, digital wallets and, and you know, the blockchain and get, you know, art um, to keep, to fund, you know, Ukraine creatives. It's like buy, you know, art from Ukraine creatives because, you know, they don't have access to banking systems at this point, right? That's just not available anymore. And, and you see people on say NFT Twitter, there was one, um, one, one artist, I forget his name, I have it written down somewhere, but he's a Ukraine artist. He's like, I needed to, I had to get out, I escaped, I got out. And the only thing I've got access to, I don't have access to banking, I don't have access to any of my funds, no money, no nothing. The only thing I still have is access to my Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Like my, big, my, my cryptocurrency, right? Like that's it, that's all I've got. And if it wasn't for this, I don't know where I'd be right now. And, and he's, you know, he's telling us on, on, online, like, it, like I wouldn't be able to buy food. I wouldn't be able to, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, this is my lifeline right now. And people start sending, do you know what I mean? It's like, I just sent your wallet this. I just sent you this. Like, I just bought two pieces of your art. Like, you know, like, because that's still valid and still available and happening in whatever country he's been able to get out to. Do you know what I mean? He's still able to sell his art. Um, you know, and it, th that, that was really powerful. That was really powerful to think that, you know, maybe you can't carry your canvases. You know what I mean? You can't like, I mean, you're literally leaving in, in, a, in, a, in a situation of crisis like that. You, you know, you're leaving with what you can carry, right? So, you know, mothers carrying children, you know, a couple of things, whatever you can put in a bag, a backpack, whatever, what you can move physically with, right? And to think that you have to leave um, a career 
like a career of art, a career like music, equipment, whatever it is that you have, your, your space, your like, like, you know, photo albums, hard drives, you know, all of it, right? And all you can carry is what, like what you can move with in the moment. And to think that because there was the blockchain at this point in time, and somebody had um, been able to, you know, get, ha open a digital wallet, get some currency in there, um, they are able to purchase food in their new place. And, and like, they don't have to, to stress about that if, that, if that makes any sense in, in a moment of, I mean, I, I imagine excruciating levels of, of anxiety and, and, and depression and who knows, you know, all the things, all the things, right? The, the devastation of what that is. Um, to think that there's like a little light and that there is some kind of support and, and connection to the outside community utilizing this, this technology is, um, is pretty powerful, um, you know, in, in, in this moment, it, you know, so yeah. Um, we've also been able to see how people have found ways to, um, you know, build that like get fundraising, do you know what I mean? Like, and, and really fundraise for something in a way where they're not out there, you know, pleading with philanthropic and, and whatever organizations or, 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 you know, funders and all, and all the things, Hey, can, you know, the whole, the deal, right. The spiel, like where you're like, Hey, we're, we're doing, it's that time of the year again, we're doing the thing again, you know, can you donate, you know, you're looking for your donors, you're out there, you know, you're, you're pleading and, and bartering and, and, you know, engaging and all of that when you can just be like, we've put together this fabulous collection of yada, 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 you know, we've partnered with these artists, we're highlighting this, whatever we're, we're really, you know, we've, we've created utility for anyone who's not familiar with utility. Um, and NFT has sometimes um, extra, extra aspects built into it, right, where you say, like, if you have this NFT, you also get this, you, you might get a physical thing, you know, maybe that's a pair of shoes, maybe it's a painting, maybe it's a, a digital file of, of how that was created, what have you, like, I mean, it's endless what you can attach. But there are also experiences built in. I've seen some artists say like, you know, the person who buys this top tier, this special one, this one of one special significant piece in our collection, we're flying you to Iceland and we're gonna like, you know what I mean? You're coming like, like all seem, you know, like everything all in, you're coming to the, the concert, you know, we're doing a dinner, you're meeting us, we're hanging out, like, all kinds of ways. Um, there was one artist, Blau, was, you know, it, his top tier piece was, um, I think you got, or maybe it was the second tier, but one of them, you know, if you bought that one, if that's the one you got, you know, in the auction, if you were the last person to, to win that and, you know, get it through the auction, you got an opportunity to create a, a song with, with him, right? You got to, you know, so there are all kinds of things that, that can be like put into it that um, engage uh, you know, your fans, engage an audience, build community, you know, different aspects, connect you in different ways. Um, you know, yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's, people are really thinking outside the box. So. Well, I think this thinking outside the box is really something important to consider because a lot of, you know, artists, musicians ask me about it and it's kind of like, what should I do? And I think you bring up a really interesting point that there may be some concepts but what you do with it is the thing that's intriguing that it's not just like you putting the art piece. It's like, how is that connection with the audience? What, right. you know, and, and, and right. we're having to reconsider that. I think, I don't know, especially like, uh, mu like from the musical ways, like you don't necessarily have collectors, but now all of a sudden you have collectors that you wouldn't right. like in the visual art world, but even like that you would have, collectors in the visual art world, these collectors are thinking about collecting in maybe a different way. There's a different collector mindset. Maybe you could talk a little bit about this. Like, what are some of these collector mindsets as we look at like collectors and community building and, you know, what that relationship with artists and musicians, DJs? Sure. So um, when this, this space really like is centered around um, like, uh, collecting, right? So, so collector culture, I like to call it, right? So sometimes when I'm explaining 
to someone who doesn't know what this is, um, uh, I'll explain it in, along the lines of collector culture. This is what it is. So in, you know, most people know that there are people who collect antiques, like old things, right? Old furniture, whatever, things that are, you know, that we call antiques. And there are people who collect those. And, and to them, those have value because of the stories that they're a part of, um, the techniques that, that were involved in creating that piece or, or, or whatever that was, do you know what I mean? And, and all of that like builds value and time, right? The, the distance of time, right? The, the value of time, you know, something that was, you know, created 50 years ago might be less valuable than something that was created 2000 years ago and, and whatnot, right? And a lot of that also speaks to human culture and, and what was happening in history and human history and all the things, right? Like it, it all comes into play. Um, but the same thing, you know, when we look at somebody who collects baseballs, right? That, that's collector culture as well, right? You collect baseballs because you're a fan, because you love the sport, you love the players, like something about the, the play, you know, what, what happened at that particular game, that point in time, you know, that's, and, and it has value. So to someone who doesn't value baseball, you know what I mean? Like they might look at a baseball and say, what else? It's just, it's a baseball. It's like this round white thing. Right. But to someone who values baseball and is a collector, you know, and is, is, is embedded in collector culture, that ball might be everything. It's like that so much value. Right. And so the difference where, you know, you can, some people might be able to sell that ball. There are people who will pay $20,000 for it. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Whereas somebody else would be like, whatever, I don't get it. Um, so in the same sense, there's collector culture here in NFTs and collectors tend to purchase for the same reasons. Um, but there's a, an added layer, right? Because we're talking about cryptocurrency as well. And as the value of cryptocurrency moves, right? There's this added, there's this other layer of value that comes in with what you purchase. So say you purchase a work of art that is NFT art um, and it's a digital work of art and it's, it's on the blockchain and you purchase it because you love the artist, you want to support the artist or what have you, you love the artwork or you love this movement, this time. And, and that has value for you, right? Like the collecting a piece, a work of art that's a part of this person's career or a part of this person's whole thing. Um, but then there's this other part, right? And you've got kind of two tiers. There are the people that are speculators or, or, you know, the trader types, the, the people that are, you know, look at this as an asset. It's a digital asset. They're investing in something that they believe um, has a certain value now, and they believe it's going to increase in value in the future. So that part of, of collecting, right, that, that value appreciation thing, all of that comes into play for some people, for them, it's, it's really about that appreciation and, and, and the value and, and, all of, all of what goes into that. And then there's that, that other aspect where um, just by the fact that it is connect, that we, that we use digital currency, you know, cryptocurrency to purchase these things, to move these between people, um, it, you know, you've also got the value that naturally increases or, or decreases, you know, um, as the value of the currency moves. So say you, you, I purchase a piece from you. And it is 0.3, let's just say it's, or 0.1, 0 0.1 Ethereum. And so right now, based on today's market for Ethereum, that might be somewhere around, I don't know, I'm going to throw a number out there. Like, let's say it's $200 or whatever, $150 today. But let's say that Ethereum 10 years from now has shifted. It's no longer $2,500 um, you know, in its value per one Ethereum token today, right? In 10 years, let's say that that has moved to somewhere around what, what um, Bitcoin is, and it's, I don't know, 30, it's worth 30,000 or 40,000. So that 0 0.1 that you paid, right, or that I paid, you know, for that piece from you, it's still locked into it. It's still registered. It's, it's in the blockchain as, as recorded, that's the transaction. If that's what I last paid for it, right? Now that point zero that that zero point one has a much higher value. It's no longer like it doesn't mean $150 anymore. It now means, you know, whatever, twenty, you know, ten thousand or so, like fifteen thousand dollars 
is what was last paid for it because the value has changed. Do you know what I'm saying? So like the, the right. So um, that's a, a, an aspect of it. And that's part of the reason why some people will collect because they understand or believe that the currency also is going to increase. And so that they're, they're looking at, at monetizing and, and building a portfolio or wealth in that way. So it's, it's an interesting way of, of you know, different people are, are collecting for, for these different reasons and, and all the layers come into play. That's very interesting. And how would you say that in terms of like, um, for like artists, musicians, DJs, like when they're going off and making their own work and putting it out there, what should they consider, um, you know, whether they're new or whether they're, you know, kind of, I, you know, I don't want to say maybe what they should think about if they're super experienced, but maybe if they're like, <laughs> um, but maybe if they're like newer, they've done a bit or they're, you know, or they're just thinking about what they're going to do for the next thing. What are some aspects that maybe they should be thinking about? Um, so... Mm -hmm. more are, are you speaking more in the sense of like an emerging artist or somebody that's yeah. like building their career i I'd, I'd say i'd say both i'm interested in like someone who's already has people who want to collect their work but then Subtraction. but then i think we're going to think about something different if someone doesn't have hasn't built something over time like that right. that, that we're going to have a different conversation someone has like you know a couple hundred thousand people following them to like someone who's like well, I'm new to the whole art world and business and music. Right. We're going to have a different conversation, right? Right. So two things that, that come out of what, what, you're, what you're saying. Um, if, you're, you know, if you're an artist and you have a base, do you know what I mean? Like you've moved art. Like the, the, you know, there, there, there are collectors or people who want to commission you for your work or are interested in your work or whatnot. This is like this is a really great, in my opinion, um, it's a really great new way of engaging, um, engaging those, those people and, and building a new, like a new highway of, of how you, um, you know, get your work out. Do you know what I mean? So um, also because you could take like a painting, um, like a physical painting, and just by photographing it, do you know what I mean? And digitizing it, now you have two versions of it. You've got the digital version of it and you've got the physical version of it. And those two, even though it might be like a photo of the exact same painting, that is a different work of art, right? That is a different work of art. It is understood as a different work of art and it is collected as its own work of art. So there's, there's that, right? So there's this building a new avenue, a new way of, of, of getting your art out to new audiences and, and a new, you know what I mean? Like just another highway, another way to, you know, in the same way that artists will sell prints, you know, um, as opposed to like the actual painting, do you know what I mean? Um, those are, do you know what I mean? Like different formats. It's the same thing. It's, it's that thing. It's like, oh, well, do you want, you know, do you want to sell prints of your work? Yes or no? All the things that, that go into it. Do you want to have a a limited edition or do you want to just have an open edition just keep making those prints um all the different all those same things come into play and this is just another way to do that it's like think of it like um a new way of doing prints right and those prints can be you know standalone you know um individual uh what do you call it like one of ones where it's just like the, that's the only one in existence or you can do editions just like prints, right? And you can have a limited amount, like you, you set how many are there, or you can, or you can say like, no, I want it to be 10,000. I just want all kinds of people to buy like a version of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, so there's that. But then there's also the newer artists that say hasn't, hasn't even begun to sell art yet. And they're just like, ah, I don't know. I don't know how to get, you know, or, or music or, or what have you, whatever it is. I don't, you know, poetry. You know, I don't know, like, how would it, like, do I have to write a book of poems to get my poetry? Or is that the only way I can sell my poetry? Do you know what I mean? Do I have to find a way to perform my poetry to get paid to perform my poetry? Like, what does that entail? Like, how long does that take? Do you know what I mean? All the things, right? Um, or, or you're a new artist, you've just started painting, or you just started sculpting, or you just started whatever. 
um, or you're a digital artist and you just started, you don't even have like a design, you know, like you don't have design clients, anything like that. This is a fantastic way to begin um, a, your career, to get to begin, you know, that, that, that monetization, right? Because it takes almost no effort to get your work up there. It's just you deciding what you want to put out there and deciding, you know, what you're going to say, if anything, in the description. Do you know what I mean? And, and what platforms you, you want to place it in and, and getting it out there and then, you know, pushing it on socials, um, doing your, you know, if you, if you want to get like a little bit of momentum behind it, um, you know, and getting it out there. Maybe you do a TikTok video that your work is out. I don't know if that's your thing, TikTok, right? Whatever it is to get the word out, somebody can come along, look at it and say, I really like this, you know, sold you know, done, you know what I mean? Or you can get with a group of friends and all of you are pitching your new work. Do you know what I mean? There's this hub, there's a conversation in Clubhouse or a conversation on, you know, in, in Twitter spaces and you're all talking about your art and somebody walks in there or somebody jumps in and is like, you know, I'm collecting. I love that guy's story or I love her story. Or I love whatever, where's this piece? Hit the link, all of a sudden you're in there, sold. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, it's a really interesting way to begin your, you know, the monetization of your creativity, whatever that is, however it looks. Um, and there are different, all kinds of different ways people are thinking about, you know, what their creativity is. And I, and I also want to mention too, something that you, that you mentioned earlier about um, just artists and creativity and thinking outside the box in this space, because it is just, it's so open and you can just deliver whatever and there's no like, this is how whatever you want to do, just do it. Um, and you can engage in so many ways, you know, all of a sudden we're, there's a, there's a kind of liberation that's happening in the sense that, you know, artists Oh, there we go. I'm not hearing any audio though. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there you are. There I was go. even <gasps> muted. I was even talking to the audience muted. Oh my God. Muted. <laughs> hey. It's all good. There it's we tech. go. It's tech. Um, you know, tech, Technology. Yeah. all the technology. <laughs> all the technology. So you're yeah. jumping in these clubhouse spaces, these Twitter spaces, these rooms all the rooms and you're able to do this together as a community go out there and share the work share the stories uh do it together and and there's something in there about like jumping on the stage and speaking and sharing and being mm -hmm. a voice in this right right there is um we, you know, we're starting to see people really tap into all the things that they do creatively. So I was saying how, you know, you might be known for, you know, producing music, right? Or DJing or whatever, but nobody knew that you also like to photograph, right? You're a photographer. Um, nobody knew that you like to sculpt. Nobody knew that you like to um, illustrate. Do you know what I mean? Like do all kinds of digital illustration. And all of a sudden now you have an avenue to explore that. Right. You have, you know, and, and, and monetize it if that's what you want to do or, or just show and tell whatever and exhibit. So in this space, too, we're seeing so many exhibits 
popping off everywhere where you could just join all kinds of things and just send your work off. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, like you're, it's, it's such a, such a fascinating community of people. Very, very welcoming, very, very open. You make friends like left, right and center. Um, you're learning all kinds of things. People share, you know, their tools, they're, you know, like maybe they've been in the space three years. Ah, they've got all kinds of amazing information that they just offer you. You know, people are just like, here, take it all. It's, um, it's a very, it's a very welcoming community um, for the most part. Um, and, and that's exciting. Um, so, yeah. And, and there's, um, there's a sense to that it wants to be inclusive right? Like there's that ethos is there. You know, you often hear people saying, we need more people of color. Do you know what I mean? We need more women in this space. You know, let's highlight women, highlight women, because, you know, it's, it's understood that women have um, a more difficult um, journey, you know, to get to, to places where they are, you know, um, contributing or, you know, like included in the contribution um, achieving and on all the things it's like, you know, all the, like the stairs, the stairs and the stairs and the ceilings and all the things. So, um, yeah, it, it's very welcoming. It's very inclusive. Um, and yeah, all kinds of uh, conversations, um, that happen all the time, all day long. Yeah. Five in the morning, two in the afternoon, like, you know, it's like <laughs> you're they're they're happening. So yeah. Wow, what would you like to say to women out there who are watching this, whenever now is, because we're, you know, now is many times, you know, of now course. and in the future, what would you like to say to women who may not know too much about the space, but might be coming from different backgrounds? Um, sure. And might not um, know how to get involved and know that their voice is gonna be heard at some point in time. Sure. This is, um, I'd like to say that right now, um, what we're seeing is the future being built. So people are utilizing the blockchain and this technology to build, literally build the future, building platforms and, and businesses and um, you know, infrastructure for the future, for the way people are going to engage, the way we're going to uh, buy and sell, the way we're going to find things. Um, there are countries, for example, putting all their, um, what do you call it, the, like school records onto the blockchain because it, it locks it in and it makes it transparent, it makes it accessible for anyone and you, you can't change it. No one can get in there and like remove it or alter those, those records, um, things like that. Medical records are also, you know, starting to get put on the blockchain. There are, you know, there's a country that did that, you know, um, so there, you know, there are all kinds of use cases. And so in the future, we're going to see us using the blockchain and, and just Web3. We're, we're moving into Web3 and it, it, to not complicate it too much. Web2 is what we tend to use right now, you know, like the Googles and like all the things that we use for our Internet, you know, the things like our pages and stuff. Um, but data um, we don't own our own data in Web2, right? It's, it's, we don't own it. And it generally tends to get utilized to make someone else money, right? They monetize our data and we don't have ownership of it. We don't have control of it. In Web3, that shifts, that change changes. We have um, control over our data. We have ownership of our data and we have access to building things in Web3 that we don't have access to in, in, in say, Web2, um, as well as, as different ways of um, monetizing or building or directing things um, and, and in, in the ways that we can also build community in, in Web3 is, is very, very different and it's very central to how it's being used right now. Um, but yeah, so for women, because we tend to be locked out of a lot of things. And right now I, I say it's the wild, wild west because it's, you know, it's just like everybody's in there, infrastructure is being built and all the things are being created right now for it. This is a really great time to at least look into it, right? At least take a look, like, what is this? How can I participate? 
Um, where might I, you know, begin to open up a digital wallet for the first time? You don't even have to put any currency in it. It doesn't cost you anything to just open up a wallet. Something that's like easy peasy maybe is a MetaMask wallet, right? Or, um, you know, maybe you like the Cardano, that's for the Ethereum blockchain, but there are different blockchains. And so that, those kinds of things and looking at different ways um, and all kinds of different organizations, you know, are helping steer people in. Uh, you can look at searchlight.art, um, one of the groups I'm a part of, and, and we do a lot of onboarding. Um, you can look on, if you're on, uh, say, Clubhouse, NFTS tips and a lot of the NFT groups and, and clubs in there are very forthcoming with, with information and just onboarding people and explaining things. Um, and the same with Twitter. NFT Twitter has endless info and, and groups and people that will, will engage and discuss it. But it's a really important time for women to get involved because think of it this way. Imagine when, say, the, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, just structures were being built, like, say, 100 years ago, um, like banking system. Let's just say like thousands or whatever, hundreds, thousands of years ago where the banking systems being built and designed. Imagine if women were a part of that conversation. Imagine if women were a part of that build, right? If, imagine if your input and your needs were a part of that or, or just the needs of everyone, right? Were a part of that. They were able to like have say, you know, and say, you know what I mean? Like when it was all being built, when that infrastructure was being built or trading, you know, the, the, the system of trading, um, you know, and investments. And when that was being built, imagine if women had, a, a, you know, an equal say in that. They were equally involved. There were, you know, their voices were a part of that or just anybody, like people of color, all the things, right? Imagine if, you know, you were a part of those conversations and how different that might look, um, you know, all the things. So that's what I'm saying with, with this. It's being built right now and it's being built you know, at the speed of light, I mean, it's just happening. Like one week, you know, is like years in this space when, when you look at what, how fast things are being built and how fast things are coming and changing and innovation is evolving. And um, our input and our, 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 you know, participation in it really matters for all kinds of things like safety, data safety, um, in, like real inclusion, real democracy, real, you know, decentralization, like, re, like all of it, um, you have to have many people uh, as part of the conversation for it to really be for everyone. Do you know what I mean? And, and really, like, include the needs of everyone um, and, and make it more, I guess, open to participation in the future and, and easy access in the future, you know, because this really is about access. Um, right now it's open access, but it might not always be so open access, right? If, if only certain people are building the whole infrastructure for it. So that's why I think it's, it's really important for, for women and um, people of color to just get involved, get in the conversations. I, you know, I'd like to ask you a little bit about getting involved in these conversations, because it seems to me that it's not just showing up and say, hey, buy my art, and then you're involved in the conversation. Right. That there's quite a bit more before your voice is heard just because your, you know, your identity is this or you're that, that there's quite a few more things to, you know, for your voice to be heard. Maybe you could discuss some of this because you've been involved for so long at an in-depth level. Um, what's involved for someone to actually be involved and have their voice heard um, versus just saying, hey, buy my art and thinking that that's enough. Sure. You know, one of the first things are, would be, you know, when you, when you, you know, when you're, you're interested in, in joining a conversation or being a part of a conversation. And I know one of, one of the greatest fears as a human being, I think the top fear is speaking publicly, you know, being a public speaker or speaking any form in front of an audience, right? It's, it's a terrifying thing for many people. Um, most of these conversations take place in um, spaces that are not visual. They are just audio conversations. So that I feel alleviates a lot of that anxiety and it welcomes people into the conversation. But one of the best ways to engage 
is to ask questions. The simple fact that you're curious about, well, what, why is this important? Oh, you know, what does this mean for me? Um, what, when you said this and this, what did you mean by that? Or what is that? There are no dumb questions or, or silly questions or whatever, uh, you know, you can, what is a digital wallet? Get in there and ask, what's a digital wallet? Like nobody's going to say, why don't you know what a digital wallet is? It's like, do you know what I mean? It's there, it, you know, people will be very welcoming. Oh, this is what it is. I'll send you a link or, you know, DM me, we can talk about it. Or let's talk about that right now. Or let's help so-and-so open up a wallet and everybody will sit there and open up a wallet together with someone. Do you know what I mean? Like there are no, um, no questions that don't matter. If that makes any sense, there are no quite like there are no experts in the space because the space literally is evolving by the second, right? There's, there is no one that knows everything. And if anyone tells you, I know everything there is to know, um, you know that they're just BSing you because it's impossible to know everything when it is literally changing and innovating and being built as we speak, right? So people can know a great deal about what has transpired. And people might have a real understanding of the eco ecosystem as it stands right now and how things are moving and what, what is, you know, what's, what's what, where, what, and who might be significant players or whatever, or significant things that have happened and whatnot. Um, but no one knows everything and every question matters. And the more that you ask questions, the more that you get involved and ask questions and, and do you know what I mean? discuss things in different ways, that is important. That's, um, you know, contributing to that community, that ecosystem and the framing, because there are things that you will ask that other people in the room or other people in the conversation have never considered before. That happens, I see that all the time, right? It's like, oh, you know, people who are like, you know, 10, 20 years, you know, as, as devs, like they've been developing things for like, 10, 20 years, and they like all of a sudden they're stumped by this question. Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, that's a need. Do you know what I mean? Or, or that's a thing, or that's a lived experience. That happens all the time. So it's really important to ask questions. And I think everyone has questions that matter, that can contribute, that can help steer, that can help build, that can highlight things that, you know, really are significant and, and, you know, could literally create a better future, if you will. Wow. And I, I want to come back to this idea that this is that a lot of these conversations right now are happening in audio formats. Um, right. You know, aud majority audio formats where we're talking about clubhouse and Twitter spaces for the majority and then we're maybe talking about some discord and Totally. stuff like that but um but how important it is to get beyond the text and talk to each other and build relationships and that relationship building as even more important in this space and i'm wondering whether you could speak a little bit to that especially as people might be like unaware of how to do that um you know sure. the basic level of like getting involved and asking questions but beyond that how to grow those relationships how to build them um and how to you know be involved in the community to maybe eventually have a voice and be you know a leader in the community like that takes a lot of time to be a leader in a community sure. but to grow through a community right so people people tend to have um you connect to people like as human beings we connect to people because we have um shared um, likes, dislikes, or, or, or shared things that something between us, right, that that connects us, right? Um, the same thing happens in in a space where there's no visual, right? Uh, or a, a space where it's just there's just texting, right? It's like telegram or whatever, and the odd phone call, like, you know, all the things right there. Um, signal, um, telegram, you know, all the things even Reddit, even Reddit, like, you know, you get in there and you get the Reddit, like hardcore Reddit, got that Reddit people in there. Um, and all of it um, really is a way for human connection, especially in this time where we are, I hate to say it or bring it up, but um, we're still in a pandemic, if you will, like that, that 
the effect of what that is, regardless of what you believe that that is, the world has shifted. Regardless of whether you think things are real or you don't think things are real, or, or you live in a place where that wasn't even affected, or you live in a place where you know people that, you know, have had 40 people die because of, of whatever, right? Um, we're living in a, in, a, in a time right now in human history where most of the world, um, regardless of where it was at it, it, prior, you know, say 2019, has shifted to some form of hybrid like scenario, right? Where it's part real life, part virtual, right? And we have had to really lean in on virtual connection to be able to stay connected to other human beings, to, to you know, when, when things were being shut down, to be able to still move, move things, you know, goods and services and, and all the things, right? That was our, we relied on it, right? And we've, we've now moved into a, a space where that dependency or that shift is, is, is really real. It's really here. It's, you know, um, businesses uh, and, and entire systems have looked at, at this and been like, ah, we didn't know I could really function um, highly effectively and very efficiently, you know, in this space, like outside of the real world, we didn't know we could do that. Do you know what I mean? And so there is this, um, I sense that this is really not going away. Like we we're in this hybrid world and part of that hybrid world, I feel that we've learned to connect with human beings utilizing technology, right? Um, in ways that we didn't, we didn't have to before, um, you know, as, as a grand global like group, um, we utilized it in ways that we wanted to and like for entertainment and for like, you know, whatever transportation and all the things, but we didn't have to connect with humans utilizing this, these tools, right? It wasn't the only way um, in certain points of our time. And for some people it was months and, and maybe even over a year where that was, that is the only way that they've been able to connect with other human beings. So as a point of, of as, as understanding like, how we interact with others and how we connect um, using technology. This, this is part of it here in, in this space, right? In, um, in Web3 and the blockchain, like NFT um, culture. And a part of that connection is how we are seeing people um, find friends, if you will, F-R-E-N-S, I'll just say. <laughs> but like they're, they're finding friends um, in places where they never thought they would ever find anyone that has a similar mindset or similar interests, right? And they are collaborating on things because they're realizing, wow, you've been building the same kind of thing I've been building, or you've been, you're interested in the same kind of things I'm interested in. Um, you know, this is what I've been involved with over here, and I've been involved with something very similar, and just all kinds of those things. Or maybe it's just based on creativity and art, or maybe it's just based on, you know, I'm trying to learn this new tool, Blender, for example, or Photoshop, you know, whatever. I'm trying to learn this new tool. I'm trying to learn it too. Or I've been, in, I've been using that tool for like, you know, 15 years. I know everything you need to know. DM me whenever you want. I'll give you all the tips. Do you know what I mean? And there we have these relationships that are being built. Out of those relationships, we're seeing people creating hubs, if you will, um, collaborative groups and, and you know um pods of people that are that are rising sort of together because they're realizing wow the things we can create as a group is so much more powerful than the things i can create by myself or the way i can move by myself is not as effective or as fast or as far reaching as if I'm moving with a group of similar thinking folks, right? If that makes any sense. And so you're seeing people just gravitating to each other based on these shared interests and sometimes hopping around. You know, I like this group for this. I like that group for that. I like this group for this. And they're all engaging and building things and moving together. Um, and a lot of them are benefiting their career goals in the process as well. Do you know what I mean? Or benefiting humanity or impacting, you know, global things, you know, um, you know, SDGs or 
you know, climate change or what have you, because they've met um, here. And it, it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting dynamic that's going on. Well, that's so interesting, I think, is the idea of how human connection has sprung forward. I mean, just meeting and knowing each other, like we met months ago, many months ago. <laughs> um, and just like, what is that in this digital age where voice um, can translate so much more and get to know each other, you know, with Clubhouse, Twitter spaces, et cetera, you know, WhatsApp, Telegram, um, and, and be able to call each other at strange hours or know like, hey, this is this person's like thing and, you know, see where they're at day to day or week to week, which might not have happened before this. I, I mean, I don't right. know how many people you knew, knew and they're like, time schedules and waking sleeping hours before <laughs> right right absolutely right yeah um i i'd like to also point that i mean something you, you bring up that is really fascinating is in this space you are aware of time zones i'm aware of time zones like i never have been before i mean you know before you know you you work with different teams and doing you know the things but most of what you were doing was in a certain time zone or maybe two certain time zones. I am so aware of, you know, like, you know, the UK and Berlin, like all these different time zones because um, you literally are at any given moment, you are connecting to people from all over the planet, like on a regular basis. It's crazy, right? So you're aware that right now, you know, you're five hours behind this group and three hours ahead of that group, and two hours ahead of that group, and so and so, even though they're like six hours behind, they're perpetually awake because they never sleep. And so, you know, you could just contact them at any given time, even though, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's really fascinating. And um, to the voice, um, that, that point you made about voice, people, uh, you know, so, like I'm, I'm a voiceover artist as well. And, and so voice is a really, you know, it's a big thing. It's important and all the things, but a lot of people aren't familiar or they're not aware that one of the first things we hear as human beings ever is the human voice, right? We hear our mother's voice in the room, right? It is the first thing we ever really hear. And that human connection, that connection to the human voice is so powerful. It is so powerful. Um, that it carries across everything, almost everything we do as human beings. It is why in music, for example, in, in songs or whatever, people tend to gravitate to music that has vocals in it. It's not because the vocals are great or the writing is awesome, do you know what I mean? Or the singer is even fabulous. It's just people, because of that innate like the, the the roots of of being a child being a baby or whatever in the womb that's the first sound you heard it tends to be that comfort zone right that oh the human voice is comforting right so um we find that very comforting we also have that ability to identify voices you know very well right like you'll be i'm sure it's happened to you many times you're you're somewhere and you're not looking at your phone or whatever and somebody starts speaking and you know exactly who that is within the first like three four words that that person is saying or that first sentence you know exactly who that is you're like oh my gosh you know natalie just came on and then you look and it's like yeah it's natalie do you know what i mean like you begin to identify by voice just sound um all kinds of voices and um that imprint is is really fascinating you know and and it's it's human connection at a at such a different level do you know what i mean and to and i think that that's why a lot of these platforms that are audio only have have kicked off so strongly i mean obviously we were forced into you know utilizing technology but but the fact that the human voice is centered in in so many of these applications so many of these platforms um yeah people are just like you know, um, podcasting just has been continuously blowing up, you know, repeatedly and, and, and all of that and audiobooks and all the things because of that, just that connection to the human voice. 
Um, and it's just, it's a very fascinating thing. It's very comforting for us, I think, as humans. We're very comforted by the human voice. <laughs> Well, I think this is just a really important point, as there may be people here on Instagram or wherever you're listening to this, or, you know, wherever, yeah, wherever this is being listened to, um, and or watched, is, um, is that we can utilize the human voice, that it's not just like, oh, because we're having this conversation, it's now you all as the listener, you know, or I have to be the listener, it's all of a sudden, we have the ability to join in with our own voice. We have the ability to, you know, understand that voice is a skill set and that we can all join this conversation, these global conversations. And it's not just the art itself, it's the conversations around the art, it's the conversations around the music, the stories around it, the storytelling. Um, mm. That's really connective to the audience yeah yeah that storytelling is really huge and there's also there's also a sense of intimacy if you will um when you're you, when you're in a conversation with people and someone is is you know offering their story right someone's just g giving that story and that connection with that person being able to see or visualize what that was and and how and, and you can hear you can you can feel their emotions. Do you know what I mean? As they as they go through like whatever journey or moment they're explaining or describing, you can feel that through voice um, in a really fascinating way. And and you know it's all about that connection. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a fascinating thing. But there's there's that intimacy. You know, if you if you if you clocked into or you connected with that story that that person um, you know is telling, it's it's almost like you're, there's like this imprint, right? There's this connection, like now you see that person in a different way. And now there's, there's that intimacy that you, that now has happened, even though you're not in the same room, you're not even maybe on the same um, continent. Do you know what I mean? But there, there's, there's something that has just transpired and happened that is really, really unique. Um, it's incredibly unique. Yeah. Wow. And I, I'd like to, tie this in to some of your other audio things before we wrap up here in a minute or three sure. um you know you and your djing and how crazy this is, must have been for you and what this audio is for you bridging these gaps between physical and digital spaces and you know what that you know how that transcends to the human experience i know like we've had experiences where we're listening to uh to like djs in japan and we're like jamming out and it's like and i was just like so enjoying these experiences and there's like so many other people that we know are listening together it's like a this shared experience of listening to music together even though no one's talking or to experience a piece of art to experience something together from across the world there's an element of human connection. And maybe you could speak to that just a little bit. Sure. So when a person DJs, um, and even if you're not somebody who DJs in the sense of you know how to mix, and you do whatever, but you, you have a playlist, right? You're a DJ because you have a playlist, let's just say. Even something at that level. Um, you know, and I and I bring like the far end to this end. It's, you know, um, it's the choices that that DJ has made, that the programming, we'll call it right that those choices that the person has made on you know with that music usually has to do a lot with that person's um just them themselves and so you're getting a piece of that person you're getting a piece of their emotion you're getting a piece of their love you're getting you know what I mean like that's coming through their passion that what drives them like that thing that makes them go whoa uh, the thing that makes them, you know, connect with, um, if you've ever heard of flow state, you know, what, what makes someone hit flow state and for them to share that with others, you know, tends to probably drive a lot of people into that same flow state because that music is like, it just gets you into that zone, right? Like that's that flow state. And so that it's, it's, it's sharing music, like, when DJs play or when selectors are playing, you know, whatever, presenting music like that in, in that, in that way, 
Um, you're literally, you're, you're, you're experiencing um, a journey through them. You're experiencing them. Do you know what I mean? And that human connection, that's why you have people who are like, I really love that DJ. Do you know what I mean? That DJ has the same tracks that, you know, 15 other DJs might own. Do you know what I mean? For the most part, like the same similar sound, the genres, you know, access to the same tracks, you know, on the different platforms where we purchase our music and whatnot, or the labels that we get them from. But the way that person plays those, those, those bits of music and the way that person plays those bits of music are worlds apart, right? Those are two different humans. And the way that's delivered and the, like how you experience that um, th through that person's eyes, if you will, like that person's energy, if you will, like if I could just give it to you, like, do you know what I mean? Like, um, it's that. And, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's this different flow state that, that you get. And so it's super rich and it's super unique. Um, and it's very, very powerful. And I think a lot of people tapped into music and, and DJ sets, um, in, in the, these last two years in these moments, um, I've heard so many people say like that, though, you know, those sets like kept me going in, in, in moments of real crisis and real disconnection with, with all the things. Um, there are people who, you know, started playing, had never really played um, or never even played, say, in a, in a virtual sense, right? And now they have like these massive followings because they just kept at it, did it every day and connected with all kinds of people who were shut in, locked out from the rest of the world. And this was their only human connection. Um, so yeah, it's a fascinating thing to be able to travel and, and experience a journey through music like that with, with DJs. Um, and it has been hard for, you know, a lot of, a lot of musicians, a lot of producers, a lot of artists um, with the world shifting and, and people not being able to tour, you know, artists not being able to get out there on the road uh, and do all those things. And so that shift into the virtual world, um, you know, speaking with some of the top tier artists that I know, and I'm saying, I've never, I had people like top, top, top tier DJs, top tier producers say, I'm never getting on the road again. Like I have found the holy grail of existence. I can be around my family. I can be around my friends. I can do all the things I want and still connect with my fans, right? Because of technology, because they figured out their hybrid system or their virtual system and how they're doing it, right? And they're like, man, if I could have done this 10 years ago, wow, think of like the things I could have done, not having to play out, not having to be out on the road, hotel after hotel after hotel, city after city, 200 times a year. Do you know what I mean? Like 200 dates a year, some of them, or, or even 50 dates a year. Like it's grueling, right? And to think of, you know, them sitting in, you know, like some of these you know, DJs, like when you're sitting in rooms and discussing it and it's like, wow, like what they could have, do you know what I mean? Like them think, thinking back to like all the things that they didn't have to miss out on or the things that they could have been doing, you know, um, with all that time that they didn't have to spend in airports and, and, and all the things. So um, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting time. Wow, I, I love that. Like how we're connecting with each other, how we're connecting with people across the world, how we're yeah. able to connect even with our own artistic practices and share that with others. And I think that there's something really beautiful about sharing our own artistic practices with each other through, you know, whether it's the audio, audio visual or, um, or NFTs as like a way to connect and the collection and collecting that, uh, that, uh, that element of collecting for the audience um, and how to connect with them. I, I think that we've, you know, we've gone over some really interesting things today. So where can everybody find you across the internet? What are, what are, where are places people can find you? So I'm at, um, at Pilar Cote. And I'm also, and like my link tree and everything's in there. And I'm also, you can find me at searchlight.art. So we're a, a woman-led initiative and, and we curate and create exhibits and all kinds of events and activations. We have a, a pool of over 490 artists from 45 countries and just, yeah, we're doing all kinds of things. We're going to be doing an, an artist call soon. So if there are any artists, um, check, you know, keep tabs on that because that's coming up in the next few weeks. And 
Um, yeah, if you check out invisibleoceans.io, that's a drop that's coming up that I'm that I'm really really fascinated by. I'm in love with it um, because it's got conservation and and all of that impact in, as a part of it, and it's really exciting. It's photography based. So it's a beautiful drop that's coming up. Um, and yeah, just on Clubhouse and Twitter spaces, I'll be in there just chatting or playing music. Um, oh yeah, if, if, you, if you like electronic music, I have a club in Clubhouse called The Warehouse and it's all things house and techno music. And so we're playing in there all the time. And yeah, so those are spots that you can find me in. <laughs> Perfect. We'll go find you. We'll go just just go right into the, <laughs> find find in all of the audio chats, all of the you know go to the DJ rooms. Those are awesome. Um, Searchlight, check it out. So, do you have any last words that you would like to leave us with for the day um, before we go find you across all of the platforms? Sure. Um, I just like to say that you know. This is a really great time in terms of technology and, and, the, and innovation and what's happening and what's coming. It's a great time to really pay attention. If you're not really, if that's not your thing, at least pay attention because uh, the future is really, really exciting. And we have an opportunity right now to make that future very, very accessible and very um, just and safe and you know, have all the things really purposely integrated in, into like the entire infrastructure and the way we move in the world. So it's, um, it's a really important thing. If you can um, you know, offer a little bit of time towards it to really pay attention because um, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time to uh, be here as a human being uh, right now, like just what we are doing and what's happening and where we're going. It's, it's an exciting time. Thank you so much, Pilar. I, I really appreciate you joining me today and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye. How do we get off? Yeah, you just press the X button. You just press the X button. Oh, there we go. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for joining today. Uh, thank you to Pilar for joining and sharing so much amazing information. I think there's there's a lot from today. Uh, you know, if you want to go back and check it out from collectors to connecting with each other uh, through these digital means, the voice, um, and just how to get involved um, and, and what's in it to get involved and asking those questions. Uh, I think that there's just so much rich information that we went through today and, um, and I hope you really enjoyed. Uh, thank you to Doing Good HQ that we're on here, an amazing NFT platform that connects the artist with also being able to be a philanthropist. So thank you to Doing Good HQ. I'm Aaron Jack with the Aaron Jack Show. So I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Until then, take care.